Thanks for being here. In case you've already forgotten, I'm Leslie Hallou, one of the uh, professional services engineers here at Jamf. Want to look at scripting the uh, Jamf Pro API? Hopefully, you've seen it before. Uh, if not, there it is. Uh, provides a nice portal into the database, allows us to uh, update records. Uh, it's a safer method than, say, trying to hit the database directly. Lots of uh, linked fields within the tables, utilizing the, uh, the API. Hopefully, guards against maybe uh, doing some updates that end up harming the database. So I think my first um, use case involving the API had to do with uh, asset tags. Got maybe a thousand machines. Uh, I need to associate them with an asset tag. I certainly don't want to type them in one at a time. So API provides us with a, a nice way to get information in. Uh, in bulk format. All right. Um, what do I want to look at today? Tools that I use um, within the Mac, built-in tools, some uh, custom tools, tools from uh, third parties. Uh, I want to look at a few examples. Uh, I'm going to be throwing some code out there, maybe a lot of code. Uh, I'm going to go rather quickly. I'm not going to get too in-depth into the code. I'll be posting everything. You can digest it later at your own pace. I just want to give you a bunch of examples, maybe foster uh, some thought. Where else can I share the code? So as I develop tools, where's a convenient place to locate them? If you develop tools, you want to share them, uh, where can you post those? And then maybe a, a look ahead. Uh, what do we have to look forward to uh, with the API? So probably the first tool I started working with, um, terminal, built-in curl command. Uh, it's fairly convenient. I can post information. I can retrieve information. Just to go through a, a quick example, uh, some of this you may be already familiar with. Uh, so curl's got a few uh, switches available. S, I'm going to make it silent. I'm not going to get a whole lot of feedback as I make my request, uh, the K, so self-signed certificates. Uh, I won't have any issues if the, the server is using an untrusted or self-signed certificate. Dash U, or the U on the end there. Uh, we're specifying the user that I'm uh, going to make the request with. Specify the endpoint. Uh, it's typically my Jamf server URL, slash JSS resource, and then the endpoint that we're interested in. Uh, we can get back either XML or JSON as far as the data. So I'm going to specify in the header. I want XML. Uh, we're going to pipe that to XPath. Again, that's also built in. Um, command on the Mac OS. I'm going to look for the name tag. I want to format the data so it looks uh, somewhat nice. So uh, a little bit of chicken scratching, really. Uh, I'm going to insert some uh, new lines so that everything isn't on one line, and then also take out the, uh, the name tag. Sending information, either updating records, creating new records, uh, I do that in a similar fashion. Uh, I'm adding in a switch, the, the dash V for verbose. Uh, it's going to be handy if I need to do some uh, troubleshooting, perhaps. It's going to give me back uh, error codes. It's going to give me... Uh, information on the, uh, the certificate on the Jamf server. And then again, K, self-signed certificates, uh, U, the username, resource that we're looking at. Uh, in this case, I'm going to create uh, a new record, a new configuration profile. Anytime I'm going to create, uh, it's going to be uh, ID slash zero at the end. The zero indicates I'm creating a new record. Define headers, just like we did before. Uh, as I send information, I define a content type. 
I'm posting XML. And then, uh, so dash T, the file uh, that contains the information, the, uh, the XML that I'm uploading, and then the, the method post. PowerShell. So uh, I think we're at a point now I can talk about maybe some Microsoft stuff <laughs> without getting uh, pelted. Uh, it also helps that PowerShell is available on Mac and Linux. I have to install it, but it's there. Uh, they've got the uh, invoke rest method, similar to curl. You can run it from a uh, command line. Again, a quick example. I need to get credentials to authenticate. We can quickly do that to get credential. I'll uh, define a variable that captures the request. There's our invoke rest method. It's like our curl. Defining the method, get, specifying the header, just like we did with the curl. Uh, I want everything in XML. Define the endpoint. Uh, so there switches URI. I suppose technically it's a, a URL, but uh, Microsoft, it doesn't have to make sense. Uh, just work. <laughs> Uh, skip certificate check. So that's like the, uh, the dash K on the curl. Uh, the skip certificate check is only available on the Mac and Linux on the ported PowerShell. If I'm going to do this on a uh, Windows machine, I have to do a little bit more work to take care of those uh, self-signed certificates. Credentials, so we'll pass the credentials. Then I'm going to loop through each of the results. I can get to the name a couple of different ways. Um, I can use uh, an XPath sort of uh, notation, or there's a dotted notation. Basically, I start at the, uh, uh, the top level tag. I'm looking at the uh, configuration profiles. Within that is each individual profile. Within each profile is the name, and then just loop through. A quick look at how this is going to work. So I've installed PowerShell on my Mac. Jump in there, just type the path to the script. Prompt for credentials. And we get a quick list, so it's pretty quick. Sending information, posting, same story. Again, we'll get our prompt for credentials, uh, define our request. In this case, it's going to be a post. Again, the, uh, the endpoint that we're interested, identical to what we had with the curl, slash ID, slash zero. Again, we're going to create a record. There's our skip certificate check. I don't need that if I have a trusted certificate. Uh, provide credentials, specify the file, and content type. Again, application XML, I'm posting XML. So not everybody likes working in the uh, terminal, working on the console. Uh, so a couple GUI tools that I frequently use, I see used uh, by a number of other people. Uh, Cocoa REST Client, it's free, it's Mac only, uh, but I like it. And Postman is a fairly common uh, REST API tool, multi-platform, uh, can be used uh, also with maybe developing an API. If you've not seen, uh, so this is the Cocoa REST client. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use. Um, specify a URL, so maybe I want to get a list of computers. Again, I'll specify my method, get. Uh, headers I specify, then uh, authentication. Provide some credentials there. Submit. And I get some quick output there at the bottom. Uh, it also gives me back the, uh, the response code. I can see headers 200. Anything in the 200 range is typically good. Posting information, put, if I want to update, I can do that as well. Uh, so here I wanted to add a computer to a static group. I could add a bunch of computers to a static group if I wanted to. Again, specify the endpoint. 
So here I'm identifying it by the uh, ID of the smart group. I'm going to paste in the body there in the top window the uh, computer that I want to add. I'm identifying that by uh, the computer ID as well. Headers, again, I'll need to specify XML. Authentication, I need to make sure I have an account with uh, create or update access. Method is put, we hit submit, and the bottom window kicks back the uh, ID of the group, if it worked, that I just updated. And again, the header is 201, that's good. Postman, again, similar application, multi-platform, I can do the same type of thing, specify the URL, um, getting a list of computer groups in this case, the method, uh, we specify the get, uh, down below that we can specify uh, the headers, in this case I want to pull JSON, so just to uh, mix it up a bit. Uh, authentication, again, I can provide credentials there. Once I hit send, just like in the uh, Cocoa REST client, it uh, gives me back the response. Response header, all sorts of good information. So we've got some nice GUI tools. Uh, we can do some scripting. Uh, GUI tools are nice, they're easy to use, but they might be focused on something that I'm not interested in doing. So bumping it up a little bit, we can look at Swift. Uh, maybe write our own get. Uh, once I'm comfortable with that, uh, maybe I can add uh, posting or pudding. Once I'm comfortable with that, uh, I can move beyond just computers to maybe uh, policies, uh, smart groups, do all sorts of things. So I won't cover the entire build, but uh, just the function that I used uh, to get the computers. So defining a function, I'm going to be passing the endpoint. In this case, it's just going to be computers. Later on, maybe we'll have a drop down in our application where I can select uh, the endpoint. A little bit of code to uh, make sure I get the most recent results. I might do my get, make some changes on the server. When I do another get, I want to make sure I get the uh, up-to-date information. Uh, we're working over HTTP, HTTPS, so I need to worry about special characters. I can take care of that by defining what I would call safe characters, anything that's a letter or a number, alphanumeric, anything outside of that, I'm going to encode. Our application will have a couple of text fields, username, password, so we're going to grab those, and uh, I can see I have this add percent encoding if necessary. Uh, merging the credentials together so that I can submit that in a form that Swift likes. Same thing for the URL. Got a field for that. We'll grab that information. Define the method. In this case, we're doing a get. Uh, defining authorization headers. Uh, the content type. In this case, we're doing a JSON. Swift does a, a decent job handling JSON na natively, so I'm going to use that rather than XML. Define my request. Um, I've got it set up to hopefully I'll get some data back, useful data. Uh, we're grabbing the uh, response code and error if we run into that. Format, formatting my data into a, a format that uh, we can digest into JSON. So it's got that JSON serialization, converting the data. I'm going to start parsing through it, uh, sort of build an array, if you will. Start looping through the uh, individual items. As I read each individual item, I can use the, uh, the tags. So I'll grab the, uh, the record ID, the computer ID, along with the uh, computer name, 
add that to a list. As we pull records, we'll build the list. Uh, couple else statements, so if I do run into some errors, we'll capture those, print it out. Check the response code, if it's good. Uh, completion, so I've finished going through the loop, I'm gonna return back to the rest of my program, the results, the list of computers. If we've got an error, man, we'll print that out, but that never happens. And we'll close off all the other uh, blocks there. Self-signed certificates. Um, by default, Apple will not let the program connect to a server with a self-signed certificate. Uh, so we'll just add a little function, just a few lines there. Add that to our code. And then also, uh, if you haven't used Xcode before, anytime I create a project, uh, it gives me a template, basically. I need to modify that info.plist, the default uh, that it provides. I'll add that. App support security settings is a dictionary, and within that, allow arbitrary loads. So once I add the function, change the plist, I should be good to go connected to any server. Build the app. Again, I'll be posting this. You can uh, parse through the whole thing later. And we'll just give it a quick test run. So we're looking at the computer's endpoint. I could probably type a variety of endpoints and pull the information from those as well. But there it goes. So from that, you can build other items. So, back to PowerShell. I'll try to be uh, fair as far as uh, the OS is. Give equal time to both sides. Um, maybe not. Uh, so, PowerShell. Uh, this is one I run into quite often. If I want to associate my machines with departments that I have in Active Directory, or another directory for that matter, uh, they have to be defined in the Jamf server. Uh, just can't associate them on the fly. So I've got uh, hundreds, thousands of departments in Active Directory. Uh, let's look at a quick script that can uh, get those into the Jamf server. I mentioned if I run this on Windows, I have to do a little bit more work with uh, trusting self-signed certificates. So just like in Swift, uh, we have a function that can take care of things for us. So I'll create this function, ignore self-signed certs. A few more lines, and then we call the function. And it's actually more lines than the actual code to create the departments. Uh, but anyway, uh, getting credentials, we've seen that before. I'm going to define the endpoint. Uh, what am I creating? Departments. Again, ID zero. To get the departments, I'm using the uh, get AD user module. Uh, to get the departments, I have to look at each user and see what department uh, might be associated with that user. Get AD user is a Windows only module, so this I have to run on a Windows machine. Uh, sorting the departments, and I'm getting just unique departments, so I won't have duplicates as I try to uh, upload. Start looping through each department that I get, build the XML to create the departments on the Jamf server. And uh, just like Apple Scripts, we've got the try command. Uh, so if it doesn't succeed, I can maybe capture the error but there's our invoke rest method. Again, we're posting. Uh, we've got our endpoints, supplying credentials, body. That's the department XML that we're uploading. And then again, defining the content type. What am I uploading? What format? If I do get an error, I'll print something out. Give this a, a quick test as well. 
So I like the, uh, the API, it tells me how many departments I have. Jump over to my Windows machine, give the script a quick, uh, quick run. Uh, I only need to provide credentials to the Jant server. As long as the server is a domain member, it'll authenticate against Active Directory with uh, my login credentials that I've connected with. And refreshing, I can see it's yeah, building up, 52. Uh, depending on how many departments we have, it might take a while. Uh, I do want to be a little bit cautious, though, as I start using these scripting uh, techniques against the API. Um, I can overload, depending on how the server's set up, how many other tasks is performing. Uh, if I've got thousands of departments and I kick this off, uh, it's going to get very busy very quickly. So things to keep in mind, maybe start small, maybe I need to build in some uh, pauses into the script. Again, if I'm not comfortable with a GUI, uh, I might take my ideas from uh, PowerShell, from Bash, whatever, or if somebody else had a nice idea, I thought, oh, I can do something with that. So whether it's Visual Studio, whether it's Swift, maybe we could throw a GUI on the, uh, the, uh, the script. Be handy maybe if I could preview the departments that I'm going to be adding. Uh, if I don't know what um, attribute in Active Directory I need to map to, maybe provide a list of those as well. Uh, another project uh, was sort of built off of uh, some other ideas, uh, there were a lot of scripts out there for moving objects from one server to another through the API. Um, I just tried to make it a little bit more friendly, add maybe a few extra options. Um, easier it is to use, more people will use it, maybe the more uh, features it has, the more useful it will become. And thinking about what we just did, um, I just added hundreds, maybe thousands of departments uh, to a server. Now somebody said, uh, no, we really didn't want to do that. So in addition to maybe moving objects, we'll add a feature. Uh, they can remove objects. So I can uh, touch a file in this particular application. Uh, it changes mode rather than migrating, uh, removes objects and it does it very well, and it doesn't back up. So if this is something you want to play around with, uh, be careful, you've been warned. So I'm developing these tools, other people are developing tools. Uh, I might wonder where's a good place to uh, locate them. Uh, I can certainly search uh, Jamf Nation, uh, maybe browse around on GitHub, uh, just hit up Google, or marketplace.jamf.com. So this is something that uh, we've spun up uh, a few months ago anyway. And if I head out there, you'll probably see, I have to imagine, at least a few familiar items. Uh, I know it's added a, a few more since I created the slides, but uh, this is going to be a convenient place to, uh, to locate applications that can probably help with some tasks on the, uh, the server. If you have something you want to share yourself, uh, if you go to the main page, right in the middle is a submit your app button. We can click on that. Uh, if you've not submitted before, that's fine. Lower left, you can register. Just requires a, a little bit of information complete the sign up and it uh, shouldn't take uh, but a few days to get a welcome. You can then sign in, submit your applications. So looking ahead, uh, I forget how long ago it was, the Universal API was mentioned and then we didn't hear a whole lot about it. Uh, it's definitely taken a, sort of a slow road to full development, but it is there. 
there are some endpoints that we can access through the uh, universal API. Slightly different URL. Uh, the way that it works is a little bit different. Uh, it's token-based. I need to provide a username and a password to get a token. Once I have that, then I can uh, query, get some information, I can post, put, update information. Uh, it's also JSON only. Uh, there is no XML being sent back and forth. And uh, among the endpoints that are available, one in particular I find useful is the buildings. Uh, with the, uh, the Jamf Pro API, I can, in the, uh, the GUI, fill out the entire address, street, state, all the good stuff. But when I get to the API, uh, all I can pull is the name. All I can submit is the name. Universal API gives me access to the, uh, the full address. So let's maybe uh, take advantage of that. If I go um, click on the post, maybe I want to create a new, new building. Right within the API, they have functionality similar to uh, the GUI applications we looked at earlier. Um, within the uh, universal API URL itself, I can post, paste in uh, some JSON. It gives me the, uh, the schema, the format, over on the right-hand side, there's the Try It Now button. I really like this. Uh, it gives me the curl command used to create the object. Saves me a lot of work. Below that, uh, it gives me the response body. Did it get created? Do I have an error? It gives me the response code. So the, uh, the response body, I have an ID of 101, which indicates that it did get created. That's the ID of the object. Just like departments, I'm not going to want to do this one at a time. So let's create a text file, or maybe I'll talk to uh, one of my coworkers, have them export a bunch of information uh, for the buildings, get it formatted, again, JSON. Um, two's good enough. And then a little bash script uh, to parse through everything. So I'll start out uh, to get that token. Again, I'm going to use curl in this case. Uh, familiar format, S, we'll keep it silent, K, in case I have the self-signed certificate. Uh, the user that we're authenticating with and the, uh, the URL. Um, so if I go out to the, the UAPI slash auth slash tokens, post my credentials there. It's going to give me back a token along with uh, an expiration date. Really all I want is the token. So I'm going to parse through that. A little awking there. Uh, and just pull out the token. I've got my file with all the buildings. So I'm going to iterate through that, read each building one at a time. And there's my curl command. Uh, again, I can get that from the Universal API's uh, web page. Just sort of swap out uh, and use the, uh, the variables that we have in our script. We can give this a, a quick check. So there's the, uh, the building that we'd uh, created earlier. Jump out to terminal, give our script a quick run. Our credentials. And there we have the full addresses. So uh, I can certainly save a little bit of time. <coughs> and finally, Some people would be upset if I talked about the API without talking about Python. So I'll uh, just throw that in there real quickly here at the end. Um, and maybe to give an idea why I used Bash for my example, if I'm going to create buildings with Python, I'm going to start out by importing a bunch of libraries, define the, uh, the URL, 
that we're working with, uh, the file that contains our data, take care of uh, untrusted or self-signed certs there at the top, Look at grabbing the token there in the middle. Uh, passing the credentials, content type that we're working with down towards the bottom. Forming the request, uh, being able to parse through the data and towards the bottom the actual creation of the, uh, the buildings. We have a, a little loop there towards the bottom. So a little bit more code. Um, but Python is uh, actually a nice, nice language to work with. Does a, an excellent job parsing JSON versus versus Bash. So there it is. Uh, questions. Uh, I'll be posting the po the uh, the code probably later tonight. There for you to uh, look through and digest. All right, lots of awkward silence. We like awkward silence, right? <laughs> I'd say, Leslie, if I may, can I plug two other re really great resources? Plug away. So I, I have not graduated into better scripting. I'm still a bash script kitty. I haven't, I haven't graduated into Python or Swift or some of the other languages. Um, but if there are those of you out there that are like me, uh, two really good programs I'd, I'd highly recommend taking a look at. Adam.io, uh, the uh, Adam tool, it, it's free, has a lot of functionality like Sublime Text Editor, which is a really great tool. And the other one is shellcheck.net. If uh, you ever wonder if your uh, syntax is proper, uh, I basically copy and paste every uh, piece of bash or shell scripting that I write into that uh, interpreter to make sure that I'm formatting my uh, my things properly, making sure I got my quotes uh, in the right spots, and then I'm not going to do anything weird. So I would, I'd add those to your, your list of great tools right for folks as well. I was filling time to see if you guys had any other further questions. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, Leslie, thank you so much. All right. Everyone have a great day. Thank you.